Anyways. So, so the U, yeah, the USHL back in 2010 when Johnny Gaudreau headed over there was it was considered an up and coming league, but it wasn't quite where it is now. And so Johnny Gaudreau put up, let's be honest, pretty damn good numbers. I believe he yeah. was fourth in that league in scoring. Coincidentally, number one in that league in scoring was current Flames teammate Blake Coleman, who at that point was a 19 year old, uh, two years older than Johnny Gaudreau. So Gaudreau at uh, he was listed by Central Scouting that year in the combine as 5'6 and 137 pounds, probably with his gear on. He was 137 pounds. So he was teeny Fun tiny, fact, too, and he was coach, fourth in scoring. Coach was Jim Montgomery, former NHL coach Jim Montgomery, fourth at Dubu- Dubuque at that time. So, And, yeah, I believe Jim Montgomery, when he was in Dubuque, he went on to – actually, I believe he coached uh, for a while – uh, at the University of Denver, Denver University, he, he coached. Uh, he he co- coached a few places in the NCAA. He's coached in the NHL. So at that point, you know, but at that point, Jim Montgomery was considered an up and comer. Uh, so Gaudreau put up seventy-two points in sixty-one games or sixty games. He was very, very good, fourth in scoring, but teeny tiny. He was ranked, uh, I believe, uh, something around one hundred and ninety or one hundred eighty-eight, hundred ninetieth by Central Scouting amongst North America skaters, and. You know, for the folks going, well, 72 points, he's only ranked that low. Yeah, he's ranked pretty low because he had uh, his track record at that point in his draft year was one year of, of, you know, junior A hockey at that point against players that, you know, it wasn't really clear, uh, the you know, who the quality of players he was playing against. Uh, it's sort of the similar challenge that people have now projecting players from the, from you know, the, the AHAHL, the BCHL, the Canadian, you know, junior circuit because you don't really know the quality of players that they're playing with. So they always have translation questions. And the other thing with Goudreau is he played one year of hockey at a relatively high level. And the rest of the time he was just ragdolling people in, you know, a high school league or a local, local bantam and midget. So he was, he had insanely good numbers from basically the time he started playing organized hockey, but the big knock on him was a, he was small and B, well, yeah, you're doing it against guys that no one cares about and aren't very good. And then he tore up the USHL and the flames went and they, they, th- that, that was the first year. I remember this very fondly. That was the first year of the, the Jay Feaster, John Weisbrod yes. regime. And that was the year where the, the real big thing they did was they basically went in, sat the scouts down, said, here are the cr- clear criterion for what a Calgary flames player will be. And they've said, and this is what it looks like when you go to scout them. This is how you know what this is. And at that point, they, they did a thing they called working the list. And so what the Flames did and currently still do is they go in and they all the scouts go out and do their scouting thing and put in reports. And then they all come back in and, you know, for certain players, you know, your regional scouts, like if, if Shane is the OHL scout and I'm the WHL scout, I'll go in and I'll put in reports and everyone we want to do reports on for the Western League players. And he'll do the same thing for the OHL players. And then we'll switch. So half, you know, close to the end of the season, you know, if there's a few guys you're like, man, Ryan, I really like this guy. Can I get a second opinion? You send me in and I'll, I'll, I'll cross check them. I won't read your report. You just simply say, go, go to this game and check out these guys. Make your own report. And then the GM can look at both reports and see yeah. what similarities are between the scouts and just get a more accurate picture of the player in, in general. So, and, the, and he, then the, and then they you all know your scouts like you know your players like you know which scouts look we can find the best skating and tribute and and, and you know shots. and you know which scouts are your hard asses so if you're yeah. excited about a player you send your hard ass scout there just to try to try to sit, try to not be excited about them so if you have mm-hmm. two or three or four guys who come in and are excited about players then that those are the guys who tend to be high on your list so once the, once the scouting season is over the they sit down their their final scouting meeting of the year before the draft, usually a few weeks before the draft, is they sit down and they just make a list. They sit around, bring in some food, sit, bring in some coffee. They're pretty much there all weekend. And they just sit down and go, okay, who's number one and why? And then they say, this guy's the best guy in the draft. Like this year, Shane Wright will be number one on their list. No questions asked. Okay, who's number two? They plunk in the second guy. And they go down the entire list of guys they've seen that they would consider drafting. There's some guys that are off the list as in don't see any value in them, don't want to pick them. Or like like last few years, for various reasons, there's been players that have had some off ice issues that teams just don't want to touch. So for various reasons, players just aren't listed. Uh, and then, so the 2011 year was the first year they did the list. But at that point, uh, you know the the head of head of scouting uh, Todd Button, he's had various uh, 
various titles throughout his, his scouting career. I believe he's had direct, he's director of scouting. He's director amateur, of amateur. amateur. Yeah, he's director of amateur yeah, scouting. Director of amateur scouting. But, but essentially, he's been the head amateur scout since 2001. And yeah. so in 2011, he, he, there's two players that they thought were unique enough that they didn't quite want to box themselves in for picking. One of them was Nikita Kucherov. Yeah. Yeah, one of them was Nikita Kucherov, who uh, was pr- selected in, I believe, the second round by the two, Tampa Bay Lightning. Two or three picks after playing uh, Olympian Tyler Witherspoon. Winter Olympian Tyler Witherspoon. Good luck, there Tyler. Go. Uh, but the other, the, the other guy they had was Johnny Gaudreau, partially because you know they, they, they saw – some insane, insane talent. And at that point, the Flames were simply, the 2011 Flames were, let's be, in all due respect to Daryl Sutter as, as, a, as a coach, he wasn't a great GM in terms of, you know, trading a lot of things that really, really emptied out the, the prospect covers. Partially trading prospects, trading picks, trading a lot of assets that could have been turned into the depth in a lot of positions. So the Flames did not have a lot of the cupboards in 2011. So they needed everything. And the thing they needed most was guys who scored goals. And, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, the jury was still out at that point is how the game was changing. And, you know, they had some small guys at that point, they'd already, I believe, you know, they'd already traded for, for some smaller guys, but there's still the thought process uh, that Feaster had was doesn't matter what size they are. You know, if they're, if they have a certain number of small guys, a certain number of big guys, assets are assets. You just wanted to pick the best guys you could. So Todd Button, you know, he made the case to, uh, to Wise Broad and Feaster, hey, let me keep these two guys off the list. And when I think it's time, I'll, I'll draft them. And the Flames drafted Johnny Gaudreau. And at that point, he went to college. People were like, oh, I don't know how this small guy who tore up the U.S. Junior League that we're not really sure about, uh, if he can translate to college. He ended up going mm-hmm. to, he, he ended up going to Boston College. And it took him, I'd say about maybe three weeks to figure out the, the NCAA game. He was a very good freshman he was a exceptionally good sophomore he went back for his junior year to uh, play with his younger brother matt who uh, i believe now is edited he left hockey he's coaching actually uh uh in the in the the, the philadelphia area actually the rink where uh where johnny and him got their start playing which i think is really fun that's uh, cool but yeah J- uh, johnny was you know he was shortlisted for the uh, after his sophomore year for the hobie baker award he didn't win and he wanted to go back to play a year with his brother because he never mm-hmm. know if he he'd never get that probably never get that chance again. I mean, with all mm-hmm. due respect to his Very brother, rare. but his brother was not a high end player, not a high end pro. But him and his brother chose Boston College together when uh, when Johnny made his college commitment. And the idea was let's play a year together. So they got a chance to play a year together. Johnny was a two points per game college player, won the scoring title uh, in the U.S. college system by a country mile. Won the Hobie Baker, got signed that day. The Flames sent Craig Conroy in a private jet to to convince Johnny Pick to sign. Up. So jo- Johnny and uh, his line mate Bill Arnold so- both signed. They met Conroy, so- signed the contracts, got in a plane, flew to Vancouver, played a game for the Canucks. Gaudreau scored a goal, and the following season, Gaudreau kind of struggled for the first five games to figure out what he needed to do. He got healthy scratch for a game against Columbus. One, one healthy scratch, and we have never looked back. And at that point, you know, having, you know, that I, I covered the Flames that year. I think that was my third or fourth year covering the Flames uh, full-time-ish. And the, the thing at that point was you're like, man, could Goudreau could figure this out? And he, there was, there was whispers, maybe they'll send him to the AHL. Maybe, the, like, maybe, maybe this kid's just not as good as we thought he was. You know, at some point, everybody finds a level, Shane, you know, you can, you can be the, you know, there, there's the NHL is full of great, great, great hockey players that just, aren't quite as great as they were at lower levels in the NHL because the NHL is very hard. But mm-hmm. Johnny Gaudreau, uh, he had five games where he looked extremely ordinary. He took a game off, watched the game from up top, came back down and had two points against the Winnipeg Jets and has been very close to a point-per-game player ever since. 